call this meeting of the Pataskala City Board of Zoning Appeals to order. Today is December 11, 2018. The time now is 6.33. I'd ask that you all uh, stand with me and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Paxton was asked to print off some more copies for us. Um, so I'm going to ask Jack to call the roll, please. Mr. Ashcraft? Here. Mr. Howe? Here. Mr. McKendrick? Here. Mr. Platt? Here. Ms. Rodebeck? Here. All five members of the board are present. We will proceed. Rev on the agenda number four under old business, we have a conditional use application CU-18-005. Um, I have a note here that the applicants asked it to remain tabled. Uh, ask the staff to give an explanation to that. Do we know when the applicant will be ready to proceed? This has been tabled since September 11, it looks like. We do not know. Okay. Am I correct in that Mr. Hatcher is the applicant? It looks like he has something later on the agenda. Is it possible that Mr. Hatcher is here this evening? <coughs> Unfortunately, he had illness in the family, his kids and his wife were ill, so. Okay. Um, Corey Bonda. All right, Corey, do you know uh, when you are, you're also listed as the applicant. Do you know when this yes, will be sir. prepared to Yes, March forward? is our goal. <clears throat> March. Okay. The board's okay with leaving this table until March. Is that correct? Sure. Okay. Sure. Sure. All right, then we will leave that tabled. Um, we'll move on to old business letter B, and I'm going to ask uh, staff to go back and slide there. <clears throat> Um, this one looks like it'll come off the table, as well as the other ones all are up for action tonight. I want to go over a few few things that the board um, has set forth. Um, this is a hearing of the Board, the board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, anybody that wishes to speak will have to come forward. you have to give your name and address for the record to be sworn in. You're to give testimony and facts only. This board cannot consider um, opinions. Uh, things that you just want to get up and say that may or may not apply. Um, so we have to consider the application that's presented in front of us as it was submitted as well as the testimony given. All, all uh, conversation questions will be between the board, those that are speaking and the staff will not be to the audience at large so you're not to turn around and, and engage in dialogue um, with the audience. We've had that before, believe it or not. So I just want to make extremely clear how this, uh, these meetings are held. And then after um, we receive all the testimony, this board will weigh out some facts uh, as required by the city's zoning code, um, deliberate and then take action on the application. So I just want to make sure we're all clear on, on how, this, uh, how we'll proceed here. That being the case, uh, we will move forward with uh, Old Business B, Variance Application VA-18-020. Need a motion to remove this from the table. Second. Within a motion and a second, is there any discussion? No. Roll call, please. Mr. McKittrick? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. Platt? Yes. Ms. Rodeback? Yes. Mr. Ashcraft? Yes. Okay, so we are on VA 18020. Um, this was, I believe, originally brought to us maybe in October. It was tabled for two consecutive meetings at the request of the applicant. Um, my understanding is the applicant and or their counsel is here and ready to proceed, so I'm going to ask staff to present the, um, their staff report. Thank you, Mr. Platt. Like you said, this is VA-18-020. Uh, the applicant and owner is Faith Seed Investments, location at 21 Bench Street. The property is 0 0.13 acres in size and is currently in R7 Village Single Family Residential. The applicant is requesting a variance from section 1221.05B1 of the Task Code to allow for an accessory building that would exceed the maximum 
stuff. If we look at an area map here, we can see the building is outlined in yellow. A uh, little background on the property itself, 21 Benton Street, like I mentioned earlier, it's 0 0.13 acres in size. It's currently two existing structures, uh, approximately 1,200 square foot house, and a 675 square foot garage. Uh, as part of this proposal, the applicant has already constructed a 10 by 14 shed. Um, a little bit of history, how we got to this point, the applicant was cited for failure to obtain a sense per fence permit, excuse me, uh, which related to a court summons and a court order to get that permit. Um, during the inspection of the fence, the zoning inspector discovered that the shed was also constructed, constructed which led to another uh, citation, a court order. Um, and then the applicant <coughs> met with staff uh, who determined the need for the variance uh, due to the size. <coughs> so as part of section 1121.05B1, max permitted size for this lot would be 396 square feet. Uh, that's based on an application or uh, equation that's given in that section of code, and it's right there to be uh, 0.13 times 600 plus 120 times 2, which would give us that 396 square feet. Um, the garage itself is already 675 square feet in size, plus the additional shed for 140 square feet, which is a total of 815. Uh, this exceeds the maximum permitted square footage by 419 square feet, which is approximately 49%. Uh, the shed itself is set back zero, three, zero feet from the south property line. Uh, in the narrative, the applicant stated a roof was constructed on top of the fence that was built and for the purpose of providing shelter to the dogs. So as part of our review, the Planning and Zoning Department has some comments to offer. Um, we've identified a need for a side yard setback variance. Uh, this section 1221.05E1 requires a five foot setback for eight lots that are less than two acres in size. Uh, the shed is approximately zero feet from the property line. Uh, the variance will be needed for the full five feet. Uh, the board may choose to grant this variance along with the requested variance, and we included a condition with that. So staff visited the property on September 26 to take some photographs of the shed. Uh, there was a man performing electrical work in the garage uh, who I spoke to. He estimated to be around a dozen dogs on the property. Uh, there was a pass-through between the shed and the garage to allow the dogs to access the shed, and uh, staff witnessed at least five dogs. Uh, section 1203.03 uh, of the definition section in the zoning code defines kennel, a private kennel, as any lot or premise in which five or more domesticated dogs or cats from more than four months of age are housed, groomed, bred, boarded, trained, or sold. Um, and those kennels are prohibited use within the R7 zoning district. So here's some photos of the uh, shed that was constructed. Uh, you can see there's a little inset here showing from where the photo was taken and arrow pointing in the view. Um, this is on the north side of the property looking south. On the west side of the property looking west, there's a fence towards the inside of the enclosed area with the fence. Uh, you can see a couple of dogs here on the bottom of the picture and from the south looking north. And you can see the shed constructed here is pretty much parallel with the garage, existing garage, which is on the property line. So the Lincoln County Bu Building Code Department uh, requires building permits for any structure or addition that is attached to an existing structure. Um, the applicant did not state whether or not the shed that was constructed was attached to the existing garage. However, from the photos taken, um, staff believes it appears to be. As of November 13th, 2018, the Lincoln County Building Code Department has received no building permit applications for 21 Benton Street. Uh, we received some comments from our zoning inspector. Uh, there's an online ad for Dane's RR Farms listing the applicant's phone number that lists six puppies for sale. Uh, as of October 1st, 2018, this was still posted. Uh, however, it was actually removed today. Uh, ten citations were issued from the Lincoln County Dog Warden for failure to register dogs. Four in the 20th March, or excuse me, four on March 30th, 31st, 2017, four on October 12th, 2017, and two on October 13th, 2017. Uh, one citation from Tasca Police for dogs at large. Several complaints by residents for leaf 
abuse dogs, uh, dogs using the bathroom on neighbor's property, several previous and current code violations. On October 8, 2018, the zoning inspector observed at least two dogs abused <coughs> from the enclosure, uh, one on Benton Street and one on Jefferson Street. Uh, the full comments of the zoning inspector are included in your staff report. <coughs> uh, the Lincoln County Humane Society submitted some comments. On October 2nd, 2018, they visited the property and sent a summary of that visit to staff. Uh, it's also attached there in your staff report. There was 11 dogs, four adults, two young adults, and five puppies. One other dog was in the house, which they did not observe. Um, the humane agents that visited the property had concerns over the two of the dogs having a condition that's known as cherry eye. Uh, they also had concerns over the unsanitary and hazardous conditions for the dogs. Um, and they notified the applicant that he must address the cherry eye uh, that was present on two of the dogs, clean up the fenced in area, and that will be put on a checklist to re-verify that he complies with that. Looking County Dog Warden also submitted some comments. On October 2nd, 2018, the applicant was given nine citations for failure to register dogs. And on December 3rd, 2018, staff followed up with the dog warden. And as of that time, he had not purchased any tags for those dogs. <coughs> City of Plat the City of Potasco Police Department also provided comments um, pertaining to issues with dogs at large. Uh, they had two incidents in 2016, four incidents in 2017, and three incidents so far in 2018. Some characteristics of the surrounding properties to the northeast, south, and west is all zoned R7 village single family residential. To the north, we have a church, and to the east, south, and west are all single family homes. Uh, up here, we have the findings of fact, which are listed in your staff report. Um, and as part of this, we've uh, provided some supplementary conditions that the board may consider. Number one being the applicant shall obtain all necessary permits from the city of Pataskala and the Lincoln County Building Department. Uh, two accessory buildings shall not be used for commercial activity pursuant to 1221.056 to include kennels both private and commercial. And three, the applicant shall receive a variance for the side yard setback pursuant to 1221.05E1. And that covers the uh, side yard setback variance that was mentioned earlier. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, before we get to questions for staff, I want to clarify something I said earlier. This if my memory serves me correctly, this application came to us in October. Mr. Moser, the counsel for the applicant, asked that it be tabled. We did so. It came to the November meeting. It was again requested to be tabled. But there were, um, that was two meetings in a row that we had the residents here to um, speak on this application. And so in an effort to give them um, an opportunity to give testimony, we went ahead and opened it, uh, heard their testimony, and then... Um, Retabled it at the request of Mr. Mosier. So um, there was some testimony given on this application at the last meeting. I want to make sure we're all aware of that. Um, does the board have any questions for Jack on the staff's report? I have no questions. Sir. I have questions. I have questions at this time. Um, Mr. Mosier, I know you're here this evening. Um, would you like to come up? Um, be sworn in. Give your name and address. Be sworn in, please. Jack, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you, Jack? I do affirm. Welcome, Mr. Mosier. Is your client here this evening, or just you? No, nope, he's here. Okay. Do you have any additional information for the board? Or? Well, there's there's quite a few things to that. Well, first of all, I would like to ask uh, if it would be possible. If there were neighbors that read anything uh, or said anything at the last meeting, that we either get a written copy of that so we can respond to it tonight, or if uh, maybe Ms. Paxton could read it into the record so we know what was said. Okay, were you made aware that there was testimony given at the last meeting? No, I was not. Okay, those meetings are recorded. We did not provide that, Mr. Mosher? It is not. It's available on the website, but as we state, when anybody asks for an application to be tabled, that it's not guaranteed, it's at the pleasure of the board. Okay. Um, we will consider your request as we go through here. Okay. Well, uh, as I would like to point out, um, the, ex the, the, the permit that, that Faith Seed Investments is asking for is, there's several things going on here. 
there is a pre-existing garage that has been there for 50, 60, 70 years, however long that that structure has been there. His grandfathered in. Uh, the calculations of the city is 396 square feet. Uh, the garage itself is 675. This is only adding an additional 140 square feet to what is already there. It's not like it's adding another four or 500 square feet to the, the existing lot. It's a 10 by 14 area. Uh, when Mr. Collins first inquired about it, he had checked with the, the county. The county said that anything under 200 square feet did not need a permit. So this is 140 foot, you know, square foot, 10 by 14 area. So he did not realize he needed any type of uh, permit in order to, to, to put this in. And uh, all it is is just an enclosed area that has a, a, a roof over it for his dogs. Uh, there was a lot of discuss or a, a lot of reading into the records and things. Uh, one of them being um, that supposedly there is no building permit application on record in this case. I am going to submit what is Exhibit C, which is a, an accessory building application. Uh, if I may approach, Absolutely. this is signed by Face Seed Investments. Okay. That is the actual application in order to, to uh, obtain the permit. I am going to also submit Exhibit D and F, D is an actual zoning permit from the city of uh, Potaskala. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a number up there next to it in the far right. And here's F, it's a $50 check that was accompanying the application. So it looks like a permit of some sort was uh, issued under discussion or something there. That's what Exhibit E is. Uh, it's 18-169. Uh, and. Uh, Mr. Collins has done everything he can to try to comply by and through facing investments with what's going on here. Uh, it seems like every time he tries to do one thing, they turn around and knock on his door about something else. Now, the reason why op my office got involved in this is in hopes that I can help counsel Mr. Collins and Fate see what needs to be done in order to stop whatever has been going on out there for the last year or two because there is citation after citation after citation after citation after citation after citation. It has nothing to do with the zoning board. It has to do with whatever's going on with Potasco right now. Uh, he is requesting that this court, uh, it, 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 if, if the um, zoning board would look, um, he did explain specifically what this was for when he tendered the variance application. Uh, there's a narrative that was attached to it. It's uh, attached to the far back of, you know, part of your, your package. And uh, he tried to explain that it was for his dogs. Uh, there are some allegations that he's trying to run some kind of kennel here. And he does have dogs that have babies. He had to get rid of the babies. That happens. Uh, and, yes, there is some discussion with the uh, Newark Municipal Court as we speak. It has to do with uh, this alleged failure to register uh, a total of nine dogs, five of which were under eight weeks at the time of the citation. So um, there's a lot going on here that, again, doesn't involve the board. It's just uh, Mr. Collins of Faith Seed is asking that the board do grant the uh, additional 140, uh, understanding that the setback itself, the, the five-foot setback, if you looked at the uh, picture that was provided by the zoning uh, director over there, or uh, of Mr. Kurt Kunstman when he was going through the narrative, the garage already sits on the actual property line. There is no setback on that garage. And in fact, his own testimony was when he was going through this uh, that there were uh, uh, that there was no setback, and it was parallel with the garage. The fence was, and that's what this uh, the, the roof of this. <coughs> I don't even know if you could call it a structure because it's really not even put together. It's not attached to anything. It's not attached to the garage. Uh, uh, Mr. Collins has taken uh, Steve Blake over there several times to demonstrate that to them. But if the, if, if the board does grant this uh, variance, steps will be taken to make sure that all this is done in the appropriate way. Um, you know, again, he has submitted the stuff for the applications. Uh, they're, they're, is a quasi permit. I'm not sure what you call uh, Exhibit E there. That's 18-169. It does say the city of Tesla. It does say permit. It does have to do with the check that was tendered for uh, the, you know uh, 
the, the building at 21 Benton Street, which is why we're here. Um, Mr. Collins wants to work with the zoning board and the city to find out what needs to be done in order to do this, and he's asking that you guys grant it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mojo, I have a couple questions. Yes, yes. Um, so it's your testimony, your applicant, applicant, your client was unaware that a permit was required? In the beginning, yes. Yeah, you know, he made an inquiry, and when his understanding was that uh, it went online, uh, researched with the county, the county had some, some section out there that said if the square footage was under 200 feet, there was no permit that was required. And then I guess there was some... Uh, when he put the fence up, that's when Mr. Uh, Blake came out and said, well, you have to have a permit for that, where is this? And uh, here we are. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Moser from the board? No? When was the uh, structure put up? It was put up, I want to say, sometime in March, February, March of this year. Or was in the process of being put up, and that's when Mr. Blake first recognized or saw this in February, and then told Mr. Collins that hey, you need to do the permit, and then you know they, they paid the check in April 27th of 18, uh, re obtained whatever that zoning permit of 18-169, um, and then there was you, you can see clearly Exhibit C is April 27, 2018, is where they put the accessory building permit application in. So they, they but, tried to comply with what was going on. But that would have been after, after the fact. After that, that was after on. Mr. Blake explained to him, he just didn't throw something like this up. Right. And then he said, you know, Mr. Collins was like, well, wait a minute, the county said that it's under 200 foot. And that's where... And is is there a fence permit? There is a application. There, there's a lot that we're still trying to peel back on this onion. And is the it, uh, current got, fence yeah. in compliance with code? Yes. Okay. And there was a fence application. Actually, let me go in and enter this as a, this is Exhibit I. This is a fence permit application that was uh, done by Mr. Collins in order to remedy the problems of Mr. Blake that had to do with the fence, and this was done in June of this year. That's an application. Was there a permit issued or payment? I am, I, I'm still trying to get together records. I see the application was put in. I'm assuming that the payment was made, but out of what I have in front of this board today, I cannot verify one way or the other whether that actually occurred. But from what the city's saying, um, the, the fence is, I guess, okay now. So, as that's required. Do you have other things to submit? We'd we're missing exhibit D. G, well, these H. were, I, 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 I had A, B, yeah. I mean, what I haven't submitted, I wasn't <coughs> sure how this was going to go today. Okay. So these are other exhibits we're reserving for future use on something else. Okay. Any other questions from the board for Mr. Moser? Okay, thank you, Mr. Moser. Thank you. I'm sure we'll have further questions here. <coughs> um, so, I'm going to ask staff to speak to the permit 18-169 Exhibit E that Mr. Mosher's submitted. Is, is there, in fact, a permit that's been issued for this structure, the very same structure? For the accessory building? Yes. No, yeah, Mr. Collins did apply for it, um, and during staff's review, it was determined it did not meet the, or exceeded the size requirements, and that's when Mr. Collins was notified that variants were required for this. Um, so then he did submit... <coughs> Uh, for the variance for that would have been in October for the November meeting. So um, there is a, an application on file, how yet, however, it cannot be approved until a variance is granted. So so this this permit is not signed by any official of the city, it's just simply filled in with the name, address, permit number, and accessory building. So, yeah, there's not an issue date on so this permit has not actually been issued. This Correct. is somehow been distributed without correct completed so what do we actually have an application and a payment and a permit that's waiting to be issued pending action of this board Is that correct correct okay and then do we know to the fence permit we have a fence permit application of june 8th of 2017 it says 25 dollar fee it doesn't 
uh, gives a receipt number. So, so has this fit, fence permit been issued? Yes. Okay. The board need to see any of this? Okay. Another speaker request form. From a resident at 65 Benton Street. Mary, maybe something? You can give your name and address for the record, then be sworn in by Ms. Paxton. My name is Mary Jenny. I live at 65 Benton Street. Please your name, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so we've got I do. Thank you. Do you have additional testimony for the board uh, you'd like to provide? Okay. I just wanted to say I'm glad to see that the band is new because it was blocking the um, sidewalks and people couldn't use it. Um, there is, however, which is in the zoning commission, which which I have been told, the barbecue truck, which is used for business, which is not permitted on a residential property, single family residential property, and it is still sitting there. Um, my neighbors couldn't come tonight. They had different things to do with the holiday going on. They just wanted to remind you that they do not like the way the, it, the building's been put up haphazard. If you walk by, you can see it. And the dogs. And I believe there is a variance to where you can only have so many dogs in a property. And also, um, it's everything. It's just huge smoker sitting out in the yard. It's been there for, since they've moved in. The truck's been there since they've moved in. The barbecue truck has been there since they moved in. And if, I mean, it's, this property granted has been empty for quite a while before they took it over, but it was never in the condition it is right now. Never. And I've been there over 13 years now. I moved in in 2005 of September. So my neighbors, as we want to reassure you, we are against the shed because of all the problems that they've had with the dogs and the way it looks. And you get anywhere from two to three trucks. You get five cars. You got the BBQ truck. We park over. Besides that, they park over in the church parking lot as well. And they were parking the BBQ, when the van went away, they were parking the BBQ truck in the house that's on the corner of 310 and Benton, the White House. They were using that driveway, parking it parallel with Benton on the sidewalk. And they were told the other day to move that, so they did but it's still on the property, but they have been told that they are not allowed to have that commercial truck. It is not zoned to be on their property, and it's still there, and it's been there for a very, very long time. And that's all I've got to say. Does the board have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any response to the testimony that was just given that you'd like to offer? Yes, I would. If Good. we could leave this picture up here. Mr. Collins uh, took over a house that was dilapidated. It was run down. There was no roof. The, uh, the roof was leaking. There was a roof. There wasn't much of one. And the interesting thing is if you, every bit of what you see here, it does look like junk on first view. It does. But I've been over there. I've walked through it. What this stuff is, is it goes inside his house. He is a reclamation kind of guy. He goes and reclaims old barns. 
He goes and reclaims wood from all over. And if you've ever seen the barn wood builders guys on TV, this is what he does all over the place. And you should see the inside of this building. Steve, uh, Steve himself has been in there, and uh, there's barn wood siding all over the place. He has probably he's he has really improved the property. This what you see in this picture. A lot of that is wood that he has split up, used somehow, and what it is he's doing. Uh, it will not be there forever. Like I said, my office is involved with him to try to work with him to get him to understand this is not living out in the country anymore. So, uh, you know, a, a lot of these issues that were brought up by the neighbor, uh, by the 65 Benton Street neighbor, uh, a lot of the, the automobiles that she's talking about have either been removed or have been, you know, uh, re-tagged. Uh, and this barbecue truck, uh, it's, as we sit here, I'm under the understanding that it is no longer even on the property. Uh, Mr. Collins is learning what he's got to learn. Like I said, my office is involved with him to try to educate him as much as anybody else. What we're requesting is that, uh, the, that this zoning board issue the 140 square foot variance, uh, and then he can properly do what is necessary with the assistance of, of, of the city of Potaskala to um, make sure this property is, is in compliance with the surrounding properties. So thank you. Is there anybody else? That's the only speaker request form I have for this application. Are there any other persons in attendance that would like to speak on it? Uh, Mr. Mosier, I meant to ask you, can you, can you clarify there's a just for me, there's a seems to be a junior and senior. Who who is the owner of the property? The owner of the property is well. That's something that we're working on right now too. The original property is owned by Facey Investments and/or Paul Collins Senior. Okay. The reason why we asked for the uh, the tabling in November is Paul Collins Senior passed away in the state of Delaware in uh, November sixth. So there is a ongoing trying to transfer interest of the face seed investments and the family trust and clean all that up as well but it's involving uh, stuff up in this in the state of Delaware as, as much as it is here good thank you thank you there was um, Apologize, I don't mean to make you come up and down. You don't necessarily have to no, go no, to the no, podium. No, 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 that's fine. Yeah, I'm used to it. There is, uh, in our draft minutes for tonight from the last meeting when we did allow some testimony to be provided, um, Ms. Paxson has provided her minutes on that. Um, you had requested a record of that testimony. I, I guess one of, one of two things, which would you prefer... Miss Paxton to read that into the record now as her draft minutes and that would suffice for your being notified of those um, testimonies or would you like a recording uh, of last meeting? Well, if I was to get the recording, we would need to necessarily table this for another meeting. Then, I understand. Not? Yeah, I mean, I would like to get a recording myself. Not that I doubt Miss Paxton has done a, a wonderful job of trying to record and take notes, but I would like to hear what, you know, okay. hear the testimony. With that being said, I guess we would be asking to table this until I can review that. Um, you said your client's here. They don't, he does not wish to give any testimony, or I don't, I don't know that we have any questions for him, or you're speaking for him, I'm so I don't know that. Okay. Yeah, it makes it easier. I understand. Um, Okay, I think that's all I have for you, Mr. Mosier. I'll try to make it that way so you don't have to keep getting up and down. Thank you. Um, I, I thought, I could be wrong, but I thought that I had asked staff at the last meeting to make sure that Mr. Mosier is made aware of um, the testimonies that was given, and that was kind of why I was willing to allow that to go on at the last meeting if that has not happened. I believe that Mr. Mosier is on behalf of his client is entitled to the full record and if he does not have that, he's not had opportunity to review it. 
Um, if there's no other persons here to speak on behalf of this, although um, I'm never thrilled about tabling meetings to a subsequent date, um, I believe that would be the proper thing to do. Uh, let's go ahead and table this application until the January meeting. That would give Mr. Mosier time to review the full record on behalf of his client, come back, offer any additional testimony. The board could ask follow-up questions. Um, and then probably entertain a decision at that meeting. That's my position on it. Is there any uh, thoughts from the board on that? It sounds like due process to me. Okay. <coughs> Staff, do you see an issue with that? Do you have anything you'd like to respond to that? No. That being the case, um, I would entertain a motion to table, once again, variance application VA-18-020 and request staff to provide Mr. Mosier a recording. Mr. Mosier, you are happy with the recording? Yes. Yes. A recording of the uh, November meeting of this board for his review. Is there a second on the table to the January meeting? So moved. So I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? No. Roll call, please. Mr. Ashcraft. Yes. Mr. Platt. Yes. Mr. McKittrick. Yes. Mr. Howe. Yes. Ms. Rodeback. Yes. Okay, so the motion to table is approved. Mr. Merger, we will take this back after our January meeting. Staff will get with you in the next couple of days on the record from the November meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, to new business on our agenda and 5a on our agenda is variance application VA-18-022 submitted by Christopher Smith uh, staff to give the report. Thank you Mr. Platt, like you said this is VA-18-022 the applicant is Christopher Smith. Uh, property is located at 124 Shawnee Loop North 0.36 acres in size and zoned R15 high density residential. Uh, the applicant's requesting a variance from section 122107B1III of the Pataskala Code to allow for a zoning permit to be issued for a concrete patio that fails to meet the required side yard setback. Uh, take a look here, we can look at an area map of the property. It's highlighted here in yellow. So, quick summary of the property. It's like I said, 0 0.36 acres in size, approximately 15,000 square feet. Uh, existing structures, a 1,949 square foot single family home and a 165 square foot shed. Uh, the patio, which has already been constructed, is 1,066 square feet in size, and extends six feet past the West Mold primary structure and seven feet to the West property. So, pursuant to section 122107B1III of the Pasco Code, decks and patios shall meet the required side yard setbacks of the zoning district or shall not extend further into the side yard setback than the principal structure, whichever is left. Uh, in this case, for the R15 zoning district, the side yard setback is 20 feet. Um, however, the existing primary structure is only 50 feet from the property line, so that would trigger the whichever is less. Uh, part of that code, in which case the required side yard setback would only be that 15 feet. Um, <coughs> however, the patio as constructed, constructed is only 7 feet from the property line, uh, therefore this request is for 6 feet. Uh, take a look here, we can see the existing conditions of the patio that's been constructed. Uh, again, we have the inset map showing where the photo was taken and in the direction that it was. Uh, looking north, you can see the patio here uh, with the west wall of the house. 
extension out here, six feet patio, and seven feet on the property line here where the neighbor's fence is. And then looking kind of uh, southeast, patio. Uh, there's one main section here where the trampoline and basketball hoop is, and then another section that was constructed along the existing back rear deck. And then looking generally southwest, or excuse me, southeast. <coughs> And then looking to the east. So on October 15, 2018, the zoning inspector notified the applicant uh, that he was in violation of the zoning code for building without an approved permit. Uh, he had seven days to correct that violation. The applicant came in and met with staff. Um, and in that uh, review of the application that he was wanting to submit, staff discovered that the patio failed to meet the side yard setback. <coughs> uh, so the applicant proceeded with submitting this variance. As part of our review, the Planning and Zoning has the following comments to offer. Uh, we'd like to note that the applicant has not formally submitted a zoning permit application yet. Uh, however, he will have to do so pending the board's decision. Uh, and also, the potential need for a variance could have been avoided in prior consultation and obtaining a zoning permit. Uh, the patio could have been constructed to meet that 15 yard side yard setback. <coughs> uh, we routed this application around to the other applicable departments and agencies, and we received no other comments back. So characteristics of the surrounding properties to the northeast, south, and west are all zoned R15, medium high or density residential. Um, to the east, south, and west, you have single family homes, and to the north, you have railroad tracks. Uh, again, we have the findings of fact here, which are also provided in your staff report. Uh, we've offered some supplementary conditions that the board can consider. Uh, just one, that being the applicant shall obtain all necessary permits from the City of Tascoa and the Lincoln County Building Department for the patio. <coughs> and if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Staff, any, any questions? I'm sorry, the board have any questions for staff? Mm -hmm. I do not see any speaker request forms submitted for this application. However, we have an applicant, Christopher Smith. Mr. Smith, are you with us this evening? Would you like to come to the podium? <coughs> Give your name and address for the record. <coughs> Mr. Christopher Smith, 124 Shawnee Loop North. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Do you have additional testimony or information you'd like for the board to have or consider? Uh, not really, I guess. Just um, kind of knew I needed a permit, but it, I wasn't planning on pouring it in October. I was just going to had an oops to start prepping it for myself to pour in April. And then I poured construction, so a guy on the job site said he could pour it within. He came on a Friday to give me a bid, prepped it, two, or on, prepped it on Saturday, poured it on Tuesday. So the permit kind of slipped my mind just because it happened so fast, because I wasn't supposed to pour it till the spring, so. But, but you were aware the permit was needed? I, it slipped my mind in that section, but I think if I'd have had more time to, between when he showed up, the, the work was completed, I probably would have thought about it. Okay, any questions for the applicant from the board? Is there any homeowner association or any restrictions on that? No, sir. I've talked to the neighbor um, to the left that it's close to his property. He has no problem with it. So, and all the other neighbors I've talked to are fine with it. So, it's up to you guys, I guess. Will the area be lighted at night? I don't plan on it. I have uh, patio lights on the porch itself, but I don't, I'm not intending to put a light up there. I bring that up because there was one in our neighborhood that lit up at night no. and it caused an issue for the neighbors. Right. No, we don't plan on putting a light up there. <coughs> Anything more than we already have. So. If, let me ask you this. If you had known um, or remembered to get the permit and they told you that the uh, setback, that you needed to abide by the setback, would you have done so? I would have adjusted the the dimensions of the patio when it came within the dimensions and then went further into the yard. So, trying to make it big enough for a basketball court for my daughters. Understood. The whole intention of it. So, they have plenty of room to play. Well, that's the 
intention. So I could have, I would have came in, but extended it further north, I guess, in the yard. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, staff, as I normally ask, have we heard from the neighbors on this application? We have yeah. not this application. <coughs> Could you go back to, do you have site pictures? So in that, in your picture there on the bottom right, the red. Yeah, the the patio does not extend any further than that picture <coughs> to, to our right. It doesn't extend any farther to the right. It comes around the back of the house to the left. Is that correct? Am I looking at that correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are, are you referring to the, uh, yeah, okay. like the east wall of the house here? Yep. Okay, yeah. The, um, so the east wall of that house is exactly parallel uh, with that side there. Okay, are there any other questions from the board? Anyone else here that would like to speak on this application? <coughs> the board has uh, findings of fact to review for each application that's presented to us per the city's code. So we will now do that. This is findings of fact. These are findings of fact for variance application VA-022. Letter A, whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or if there can be a beneficial use of the property. Yes. 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 Letter B, whether there are unique physical circumstances or conditions that prohibit the property being developed in strict conformity with the zoning regulation such that a variance is necessary to enable the reasonable use of the property. No. No. Letter C, whether the variance requested is substantial. No. No. Letter D, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered or the adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance. No. Letter E, whether the variance, if granted, will substantially or permanently impair the appropriate use or development of adjacent properties. No. Letter F, whether the variance, if granted, will be detrimental to the public welfare. No. Letter G, whether the variance, if granted, would adversely affect the delivery of government services. No. no. Letter H, whether the property, only per property owner purchased the subject property with knowledge of the zoning restriction. I do not know. I don't know. He testified that he, he had, knowledge of had knowledge of the required permit. We don't know at the time of um, well, he said if, um, purchase. He said if he had known, he would have gone back. Yep. The other direction, so he didn't know. Okay. So agree with that, so that'll be no for me. <coughs> Letter I, whether the property owner's predicament can be obviated through some other method than a variance. Yes. Yes. Letter J, whether the variance if granted will represent the minimum variance that will afford relief and represent the least modification possible of the requirement at issue. Yes. yes. And finally, letter K, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed in substantial justice done by granting the variance. Yes. 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 So, Ms. Paxton, for the record, we have yeses for letters A, I, J, K, noes for B through H. Those are the findings of fact for this. Staff has provided um, sample motion for the board. What is the pleasure of the board? I move to approve variance from section 1221.07B13 of the Potascal Code for variance application VA-18-022 with the following supplementary conditions. That the applicant <coughs> shall obtain all necessary permits from the City of Potascal and Milwaukee County Building Department for the patio. The motion by Mr. McKittrick, is there a second? Yes. Second by Mr. Ashcraft. Is there discussion on the motion? No. no. Roll call, please. Ms. Ritterback? Yes. Mr. McKittrick? Yes. Mr. Platt? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. Ashcraft? Yes. 
VA 18-022 application has been approved. Congratulations, Mr. Smith. Staff will be in contact with you in the next couple days. Um, you're free to stay for the rest of the meeting. You certainly don't have to if you don't wish to. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, sir. That brings us to letter B under new business, variance application VA-18-023, an application submitted by Alan Henson. I'm going to ask staff to give the report, please. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Like you said, this is VA-18-023. Applicant's Alan Henson. Uh, location of this is actually two unimproved properties that are off of Headley's Mill Road Southwest. The uh, parcel identification numbers are given there in your staff report. Total acreage is 31.059 acres, it's currently zoned agricultural. And the applicant's requesting a variance from section 1225.05b of the Tasco Code to allow for a minor subdivision that will fail to meet the minimum required lot width for the AG zone. Uh, take a look at an area map here. You can see the two parcels in question outlined in yellow, kind of sandwiched between Headley's Mill here and Old Maid's Lane. Excuse me, Old Maid's Lane. Quick summary of the two properties uh, located between Old Maid's <coughs> Lane and Hilly's Mill Road. Uh, they're bisected by the South Fork Licking River. Uh, portions of both these parcels lie within the 100 year floodplain. Uh, the north lot is about 27.3 acres. Uh, and currently on that lot, there is a 2,581 square foot barn. Is that right? I apologize. I have a little trouble reading it, but anyways, on the south lot, it is currently 31 acres and is vacant. <coughs> uh, so the proposal is to split the north lot along the river, creating two parcels, one 18.4 acre lot with a width of 585.51 feet at Old Main Lane, and one 10.001 acre lot with a width of 756.85 feet at Henry Snow Road. Um, this split is actually in compliance with the code, so it's not why the variance is requested. It's for the next one, which would be the south lot. Um, it's proposing to split the south lot into one 11.4 acre lot with a width of 654 feet at the Headley's Mill Road, and one 18.5 <coughs> acre lot with a width of 53.77 feet at Old Main Blade. <coughs> so, section 12.505B. <coughs> Tesco zoning code requires an ag dis uh, lot within an ag district must have a lot width of 250 feet. Um, the proposed 18.5 acre lot would fail to meet this minimum lot width by 196.23 feet. And you can see the proposed lot that does not meet the requirements of the ag district here, uh, highlighted in red. Um, and the small frontage here off the Old Bank Lane. As part of our review, the Planning and Zoning Department has some uh, comments to offer. The applicant could utilize additional width from the northern lot to bring the proposed 18.5 acre lot into compliance. Uh, however, doing so does create two oddly shaped lots, and staff questions the uh, value of doing it this way. Um, the Licking Heights School District did send a letter in uh, recently um, regarding this lot split, basically saying they have no concerns with the proposal, uh, and other departments <coughs> agencies did not have any comments. So uh, characteristics of the surrounding properties, to the north, east, south, and west, we have an all zone agricultural. Uh, to the north, east, south, and west, there's single family homes, and also to the south is a farm field. Uh, there are your findings of fact, also provided in the staff report. And we do have one supplementary position that the board may consider, uh, being the applicant shall follow the minor subdivision regulations pursuant to chapter 11 <coughs> of the task book. Can you go back to your first picture with the two lots on it, please? Okay, those are the existing parcels? That's correct. Is that correct? <coughs> so the southern lot is already a flag lot with an access going out to Old Maids, is that correct? Correct. Okay. But it also has a frontage on Headley's Mill. 
Okay, and then did you have a picture showing what they're trying to accomplish? Yes. Uh, it's here. You can see four lots. I've highlighted the one that uh, fails to meet the requirements of carrying your head. Uh, okay. So they're splitting here along the river. Okay. The, the northern lot currently is the 10 acres on the 18.3. That's correct. And we don't have an issue with that. The southern lot, the 18.4 and the 11.3 is the southern lot. And the question is, is the frontage along Old Maid sufficient? 53 feet. That's correct. Okay. And we didn't, I'm sorry, we didn't receive any feedback from the city engineer no. on this as no. far as, so, so what, what, accesses are being utilized <coughs> now. Where, how? Is there any development on that, on that land now? I'm sorry, what was that? Are the properties any? vacant? Yes, yeah. The southern properties are vacant. Um, there's actually a barn right here. Okay. Um, on the northern lot. Are they being farmed or just woods? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe the applicant could provide some uh, testimony to that. And then uh, I have a question about the minor subdivision regulation pursuant of Chapter 1115 of the Tax Code. Since this is zoned ag, how, how does that connect? And I'm confused. So minor subdivision, there's two types of subdivision. There's a major subdivision, which in, involves the creation of more than five lots, uh, the opening or widening of a road. So if you think major subdivision, think like Sugarville or Broadmoor Commons. That would be a major subdivision that they're going to have to plat. A minor sub subdivision is the creation of five or less lots, and that includes the remainder, and no opening or widening of a road, and there's no plat required. So this qualifies as a minor subdivision because at the end, the proposed is four total lots. So it's okay. not a traditional subdivision that we right. think what we think subdivision. Okay. So basically, uh, the common term would be lot splits. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for staff from the board? Just, uh, I guess, curious. It looks like <coughs> the southern part that, that has the 53-foot access, over by the creek, there's land that's not included in it. I mean, the north part of that lot to the creek looks like it's been sectioned off. Does that make sense? Uh, are you talking about the 11 acres here? No, I'm talking right now, right from there to the creek. There's to the right and down. So there's an area that's not, that's not red and it's not part of the northern lot. Yeah, the, the southern lot split, because the northern lot split goes essentially directly through the creek as the proposed property boundary. It appears that the one on the south does not follow the creek, so for the 11 acre lot, they will have property if this is approved on the other side of the creek. But if some, does somebody different own that property for, between the, the creek and the north edge of the southern lot? No, it's all under the same ownership. So if we have the northern lot and divide it in, <coughs> along the creek, we have our two lots, and the southern lot, we have the red, and then if we go to the east, that 11 acre lot would be its own lot, yeah. all under the same ownership. So if they, I mean, they're odd shaped right now. I don't see that there's any conformity <coughs> now for them to raise that driveway, you know, to, to add to the 18.472 acres. And that is true. There is applicable or adequate road frontage along the 18.42. Um, but they, they do have adequate frontage and lot sizes all through here. And the thought would be if it went up to 250 feet, it would come down and do something like this. Would they still be within the 10 acres on the northern? More than likely, it should be adequate. We don't know for sure, but it should be adequate to take 250 back and down. But then the question raised from the staff standpoint is, while it can meet the code, is there a benefit to configuring a lot in that manner? You almost have a, a somewhat of a pre-existing situation. Really, all we're talking about is the southern lot split. Right. I, I mean, they've got, it appears to be 654 feet of frontage 
on Headley's mill. So even for the fun of it, even if you took that 11,396 and cut it in half and brought it back through the pink and stuff to get two lots with frontage on Headley's mill, you still have the flagpole going out the old maze. It's almost a pre-existing situation. I would assume that when this was split in the past, the frontage on Headley's mill provided adequate road frontage at the time since it was all one lot. But more than I know, I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming that's how it was split in the past. Okay. Have we received any feedback from neighbors on this application? No, we have not. Oh, I'm sorry. I just received phone calls. Received phone calls? Were there concerns on it? Yes. Um, okay. All right. So I have any other questions from the board at this point? I have a speaker request form from Alan Henson, which is the applicant. Uh, Mr. Henson, if you want to come forward. Give your name and address for the record. Ms. Paxton will swear you in. Uh, I'm Alan Henson. I live at 7518 Elgerwood Boulevard in Walden. Mr. Ryan, please do you swear from the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll do that. I do. Thank you. Do you have additional testimony or information for this board to consider? I do. Uh, thank you. And good evening. Um, first, I'd like to, uh, as a point of order, uh, uh, Mr. Kunstman noted that these parcels um, uh, referred to them as Headley Mill parcels. Both parcels are currently um, recorded as Old Main Lane, Old Main Lane parcels. Okay. But that, that's the official address of those parcels. Okay. Um, the intent, you guys don't have a, a pointer, do you? Unfortunately, okay. we only have this. If you hold yeah. down control and click the mouse, it'll work. Okay, no <laughs> worries. I'll just go. I'll just, I'll just swing with it from here. Um, the intent of the owner, Mr. Hamilton, who lives across the street from the 10.001 acre parcel uh, on Headley's Mill, he has residence there. His intent is to uh, preserve his view. Um, there, uh, so he. The reason that the 11.396 acre parcel goes across the creek and the other one does not is it follows a tree line of the woods. He's keeping the woods. Uh, if you go back to the aerial photo, you can see that, I'll just go over here, the parcel follows the, the, the creek here and then the tree line here, and he lives here. Um, it's been uh, offered for sale and there's a contract uh, to buy both parcels. Um, uh, and if I may, the real building sites for these two parcels, because of the floodplain, do you have the floodplain? Um, I'm sorry, we don't have a okay, floodplain I have it with me, which I'll provide to the board. The ideal building uh, is here and here. Floodplain comes up through here substantially. And I have that. Uh, <coughs> I pulled the floodplain information off of the county website. And, actually, and this is also a topography <coughs> board that shows where the floodplain is on these two parcels. And then this represents the existing barn. This represents the really building areas for these two parcels. It's the high ground. This is the elevation off of the uh, county website. And so somewhere in here is where the two parcels uh, are buildable, really. If this were to be moved over and to jog, it really does affect this uh, negatively. Um, and it so affects the value. You're saying two parcels, but yet you're asking for four. He's, uh, the owner's keeping the two. I mean, this is a lot split that's not without question. This we need a variance for this oh, lot split. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. he's selling the he, further. Yeah, he lives here. He wants to preserve all of this I view. I see. I see. Um, is that not buildable? Not really. Okay. Uh, and, and for the southern parcel, the buyer for both parcels 
has a uh, right of refusal. When Mr. Hamilton decides to sell, he has the right of refusal for this parcel here. So they'd probably be combined again. Mm -hmm. okay. Would you like to submit those to the board? Do you want to hold on to them? Sure. Please, Let's yeah. take a quick look at it. Yeah. Okay, you have anything this else? This is actually a little more, uh, <coughs> a little more have a better illustration. Okay. We'll include the clip. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Does the board have any questions for the applicant? Yeah, I'd just like to uh, again mm -hmm. add that it's a it's an existing condition. Um, there's never been any uh, access to the the southern parcel, um, the flag part of that parcel where it's being farmed. It's always been access off of Old Maze Lane, never off of <coughs> because of the creek. Um, it's an existing condition. We just are looking to uh, keep it. Okay. We'll leave these for the record. Sure. Since the board's considered them. Um, I don't think I have any questions. Any more questions for the applicant? Staff, do you have any questions for the applicant? Anything you'd like to provide? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. Henson. Thank you. That is the only speaker request form I have for this application. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak on this? Provide testimony, provide evidence. Please come to the mic, sir. And I would remind you this is evidence and testimony, not opinions. Um, My name's Dewey Davis. I live at uh, 3243 Old Maid's Lane. Okay. Please be sworn in. Please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you give is truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be got? I do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. I had Davis. a question. If we could go back to the picture that had the pink um, lot. Uh, yes, on this one right here. Mr. Henson, where is the floodplain on those two lots? You said part of it was in the floodplain. Just kind of point out where it is. I don't. Uh, I've got. Yeah, we have the. Yeah. 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 Okay. Feel free to take a look. Yeah. So this part of blue is the floodplain, is that correct. correct? All right, so most of it is not in the floodplain. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. And what is the intent yes, of the use sir. of these two lots? What are they going to be sir. used for? You need yes. to provide your questions to the board. Yeah, you, what you what are the uh, two lots to be used for? I believe the applicant indicated residential purposes. I, we will clarify that, though, if we are not sure on that. Okay. Uh, residential on both properties or only on one property? Well, the two acres to the left of the creek, in our view here, he indicated as being durable <coughs> for residential purposes. The floodplain extends onto the 10 and the 11.3 acre yeah, parcel. So those, those were not my concern. It's the sense. other two acre, two plots. Mm -hmm. Since I joined the 18.4 acre lot, yep. I was wondering which or both of those lots did they have houses built on them? Yeah, it sounds to me like the applicant, if I heard this correctly, that they would be uh, subject to residential uses. They would be subject, though, to the Ag District regulations. For both of those parcels. Okay, so either one of them can be built upon. That's correct. They fall within zoning yeah. for it, yes. In the immediate future, mm -hmm. which lot is to be built on first? We, we know that. We will follow up. We'll, we'll pose your question to the applicant. Okay. Okay. All right. And well, I guess that was my primary concern. Okay. And well, one other thing, is there any other way that this could be divided though, such that we would have the required frontage on Old Main Lane? Like I think that this, dry, this is nothing but a driveway, really is all it is. Sure. Um, and I think, I will take a look here really quick. The, um, 
My picture's cut off here. What is the frontage of the 18352 acre parcel? 18352, 586.51 feet. So theoretically, it could be, you could take the flagpole part, widen it out, and make it to where it would have 200. Some 250 foot of frontage so on the way. Have to go another 196 feet. <laughs> it, it would have to go, yeah, north in this case into right. that 18.352 acre parcel. Theoretically, it could be done. The question becomes, um, what what is the benefit in this board requiring him to do so? And B, he's got a, a pre-existing condition right now, so then this board has to weigh out should we put that condition on him. So okay. the, the answer to your question is yes, it could be done. One other concern where this driveway is coming by. Mm -hmm. And we come past this lot <coughs> on the uh, south side here, the one on Hedley's Mill Road. On the back side of that, the way the land <coughs> is, that, uh, that's a low area in here. And that driveway would have to be built up, thereby making basically a dam across there, which would uh, restrict the flow of water from south to north across those lots. So, sir, mm -hmm. you're saying the driveway itself is a lower, is lower than... Yes, as we get down to the, uh, as we get down past this uh, flagpole, about where it says 1377, right. that area through there is quite low. Right. So, if anybody... That's behind your property. ...make a driveway back there, they're yeah. going to have to build it up. Right, right. And when they do, anything on this side is then going to hold the water. It's not going to have a place to drain. I see. Do we have, do our building permits that we issue address runoff to adjacent properties when you construct on the property? We do look how the proposed lot is uh, to be graded to okay. make sure that water is flowing in the proper direction. Also, if someone, excuse me, were to build a, a driveway on this property, they could not artificially impede the natural flow of water. So if they put the driveway through, and didn't provide a way for the water to get through, they would be in violation of the code. They have to allow the water to get where it's supposed okay. to go. All right. well, so they couldn't the create a dam there. As I look out my front door, mm -hmm. and this area out here, once a dam or driveway is built across there, there's no place for the water. Does it hold water now, or does it run off? Uh, it runs off slowly. It kind of builds up now, so any, any additional dam that would be built, or it could be improved would upon. It, it would make it much worse. Right, it could be improved upon also. Right. With, with rating. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your testimony. That's primarily my questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, yeah. sir. Uh, Mr. Henson, I'm going to ask you to come up to address those first of all as to uses of the two sir. parcels specifically. The, two old maids parcels, can you speak to what the intended use is? Well, they are currently uh, agricultural and they are being farmed. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Rodemack's uh, question earlier. Um, substantially farmed, I mean, 90% of them are farmed right now, I would guess, as a, as a tilled waverage. Um, uh, the buyer, their intent is to build on the north parcel. I don't know what that timeline is. Uh, uh, they, the timeline that they gave to me was a minimum of two years because their son's still in high school elsewhere, in another school district. So um, they have no current um, interest in building on the south parcel, but it's a long term, it, it diminishes the value of the overall purchase because we're buying them, to, we're buying them together <coughs> and it would affect the purchase. Um, if, they so they're were, buying, excuse me, they're buying the north and the south plot? Correct. One family? One family. Okay. And they're going to build on the north parcel uh, because that's the site that they have identified as uh, being ideal for them. Uh, also to note that um, there's an existing uh, tree, uh, tree line and fence line that goes along here. Uh, you can see that on the aerial shot, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, this tree line here is substantial, uh, and again, by moving the parcel <coughs> would affect and affect the um, screening from a, a, a southern parcel, a southern uh, home being built on the southern parcel, um, if ever, but at this time, the buyer uh, in waiting um, has no interest in building on that southern parcel, so. Okay, 
Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Are there any other persons present that wish to speak on this application? Okay, so Mr. Henson addressed Mr. Davis's questions. Um, I think it'd be wise to ask staff to advise any future developer of the southern property to just be aware of the city's requirements of runoff to adjacent parcels, I don't believe. Um, really what's before this board is a request, A, not for use, and B, not for, um, to create a 53-foot access, but simply to uh, grant the splitting of the parcels um, by all other means it meets the city's code. It's just simply we have an existing lot with a flagpole type access to old maids, and the question becomes do we allow that to continue, really? That's what's before this board. So, um, any other questions, comments? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead, sir. If you don't mind, I would make one other point, and that yeah. is if these lots were split mm -hmm. and somebody wanted to build uh, two homes on the north lot and the south lot, they would be accepted, it would be approved as it is. Without a lot, if there were no lots split before the board, or, or there's no there's no lot split before the board, but there's no variance before the board. If someone just wanted to go build a home on the north lot, Mm -hmm. and a home on the south lot with access from Old Maid's Lane, as it is, it would be approved. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, just want to make that Thank you, sir. All right, we have our uh, findings of fact. We again consider for these applications. So we'll go down through those now. These will again be letters A through K. This is for variance application 18-023, letter A, whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or if there can be a beneficial use of the property. Yes. 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 Letter B, whether there are unique physical circumstances or conditions that prohibit the property being developed in strict conformity with the zoning regulations such that a variance is necessary to enable the reasonable use of the property. Yes. yes. Letter C, whether the variance requested is substantial. No. Okay, I'm hearing differing. How many no's? No. 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 I have three no's. One, One yes. yes. I, I'm going to say no. So we have four, or uh, C will be a no. Letter D, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered or the adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance? No. 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 Letter E, whether the variance of granted will substantially or permanently impair the appropriate use or development of adjacent properties? No. Letter F, whether the variance, if granted, will be detrimental to the public welfare? No. no. Letter G, whether the variance, if granted, would adversely affect the delivery of government services? No. Letter H, whether the property owner purchased the subject property with knowledge of the zoning restriction? Yes. Letter I, whether the property owner's predicament can be obviated through some other method than the variance? Yes. Letter J, whether the variance, if granted, will represent the minimum variance that will afford relief and represent the least modification possible of the requirement at issue. Yes. yes. And letter K, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. Yes. yes. So, Ms. Paxton, we have yes for letters A, B, and then H through K, no for C through G. Any other discussion by the board? No. <coughs> Hearing none, this is VA 18-023, I believe. I will move to approve a variance from section 1225.05B of the Pataskalas Code for variance application VA 18-023 with the following conditions being number one and only one, the applicant shall follow the minor subdivision regulations pursuant to chapter 1115 of the Pataskala <coughs> Code. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Second by Mr. Howe. Discussion on the motion. 
And I would simply say that um, this is an existing access. Uh, Mr. Henson correctly points out the property could be built on as is right now. I do not see a detriment to doing this, therefore I'm, support of the, I'm in support of the application. That being said, there's been a motion and a second. Roll call please. Mr. Ashcraft. Yes. Mr. Howe. Yes. Mr. McKittrick. Yes. Mr. Platt. Yes. Mr. Rodeback. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Henson. Your application has been approved. Staff will be getting with you in the next couple of days. You are welcome to stay, although you do not have to. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Good sir. evening. <clears throat> All right. That takes us to, thank you, sir. Takes us to letter C under new business on the agenda. This is variance application VA-18-024. Ask staff to give their presentation. Thank you, Mr. Blatt. Like I said, this is VA-18-024. The applicant is Brett Hunter. Uh, location of this is at 14135 East Broad Street. It's currently 1.99 acres in size and is in GB General Business. Uh, the applicant's requesting a variance from section 129509B2C of the task code code to allow for a freestanding ground sign that exceeds the maximum permitted sign square footage. Uh, if you take a look at an area map here, you can see the parcels highlighted in yellow. Uh, right here to the north, we have Broad Street. The property itself, like I said, is 1.9 acres in size. It's operated in Junction with a one acre parcel to the east, which has a separate address, but all operated under one storage facility. Um, there are several existing structures on the lot, being those uh, storage buildings ranging anywhere from 1,300 square feet to 9,200 square feet. Uh, as part of the applicant's request, uh, they <coughs> sold a 59.785 square foot sign on an existing sign frame. Uh, the zoning inspector happened to uh, notice this and notify the property owner that there was a violation for installing a sign without having a permit. Um, the applicant submitted the sign permit application. However, when staff reviewed that, we discovered it was too large. Uh, so section 129509B2C of the task code code, um, the max permitted sign square footage for a freestanding ground sign is 32 square feet. Uh, the request is for an additional 27.75 square feet for approximately <coughs> uh, Here we have a photograph of the old sign. And here is the new sign that was installed. Um, it takes up the entire frame here. So it took out all this vacant space on top. It takes up the entirety of the frame. So the applicant submitted a narrative statement with this. They stated that the existing sign frame has been present for over 10 years. Uh, when a new management company took over, they replaced the sign face to give the property a more appealing look. Uh, they did not believe it would be detrimental to the public or negatively affect any government services. And they also say that the sign is not illuminated. So the planning and zoning department does have some comments to offer. The applicant could have potentially avoided the need for variance uh, by consulting with staff prior to sign installation and using a sign face to with max square footage. <coughs> However, that being said, staff does understand uh, the desire to use the existing sign frame and to maximize the entire uh, space to use. Um, as far as other departments and agencies we routed this to, we did not receive any comments back from them in regards to this application. Characteristics of the surrounding properties. To the north, we have the Zen General Business. Uh, land use harbor is currently vacant. To the east, is also zoned general business and is occupied by a single family home. To the south is local business, uh, which is currently vacant. And to the west, we have general business again, which is currently occupied by a few apartments. Uh, here we have the findings of fact. Um, in addition to that, there is also some standards for variance and appeals that are stated in section 1211.072, uh, which allows other factors to be considered, including comments from city staff um, <coughs> if an area variance Warranted. Um, and the following factors from that section are applicable to this variance application, that being Part G, uh, 
to increase the maximum allowable height of an area uh, or area of signs on a lawn. Um, and it is suggested that that sign should not be increased by more than 25%. Uh, 25% increase of the 32, per, 32 square foot maximum permitted would be 40 square feet. Um, as constructed, the applicant sign is approximately 53% increase over the maximum permitted square footage. Uh, we have supplied some <coughs> secondary conditions for the board to consider. Uh, no First one being uh, the applicant shall obtain all necessary permits from the city of Pasco and the Lincoln County Building Department for the sign. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Can you go back to the existing sign picture? Uh, would you like the new sign or the old sign here? The old sign. So there's face of the sign there, there's text, but the actual dimensions of the sign that is there, is he increasing that from that, the frame that's there? No, he's, he's within did, that. You can see they have the, um, yeah, but what he's put up is, or going to put up or whatever is going to fit within that rectangle yeah, right Yeah, this rectangle yeah. here is where okay. it is. Any other questions? No. Yeah. If, if he had just replaced the sign that's actually printed there, and left the two side to two spots blank. Would that have been allowed? Yes, uh, arguably yes. Really? <clears throat> Without knowing the exact dimensions, um, but I'm assuming that it would fit within that. But then you have two blank spaces. That no, no, I understand. I'm yeah. just curious. Okay. I'm assuming that this is a legal non-conforming sign. This would have been old Lima, and I believe Jim Morgan's owned this way yeah. before the Patasqua. <laughs> Became a city, so yeah. okay. Do we have is Mr. Hatcher here this evening? The applicant, uh, no, he's not, but is he here to speak on this application? Yes, Please give your name and address for the record, and you'll be sworn in. Corey Bonda, B4 West 2nd Avenue, corner. Yes. Please. Do you swear or affirm that you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I'll do that. Yes, thank you. Uh, as we said, this uh, current sign has been there for well over the existing um, city of Pasqua and the current state of the sign along with a lot of other portion of property was um, decaying rapidly. The sign was very rusted, um, posed as a health risk for anyone walking down the street. We came and painted the sign um, and talking with the previous manager, uh, Jim Morgan's daughter, she said that you're very lucky that the sign is this size, it is grandfathered in and um, you should take advantage of it. Um, the middle, the text above the sign is religious text that we felt would be appropriate to change and things to um, just remove to avoid any controversy. Um, I would like to point out if we go to the new sign, there is large amounts of white space, natural tones. The only unnatural tone um, is the P in the Pataskala is actually a teal. The rest is natural. Uh, navy blue and white um, and a large majority of the sign is white space. We do not have any plans and remove the electrical components to eliminate it. Thank you. And for the record, what is your relationship A to the applicant or B to this property? Head of operations for the management group. Thank you. Are there any questions for the applicant? No. For the staff? Staff, you have any questions? No, sir. Is there anyone else here to speak on this application? <coughs> Thank you, sir. You may be seated. All right. We have findings of fact for VA 18-024. Letter A, whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or if there can be a beneficial use of the property. Yes. yes. Letter B, whether there are unique physical circumstances or conditions that prohibit the property being developed in strict conformity with zoning regulations such that a variance is necessary to enable the reasonable use of the property. No. no. Letter C, whether the variance requested is substantial. No. Letter D, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered or the adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance. No. no. Letter E, whether the variance, if granted, will substantially or permanently impair the appropriate use or development of adjacent property. No. no. Letter F, whether the variance, if granted, will be detrimental to the public welfare. No. no. Letter G, whether the variance, if granted, will adversely affect the delivery of government services. No. no. 
letter H, whether the property owner purchased the subject property with the knowledge of the zoning restriction. No, no. Letter I, whether the property owner's predicament can be obviated through some other method than the variance. Yes. 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 Letter J, whether the variance, if granted, will represent the minimum variance that will afford relief and represent the least modification possible to the requirement at issue. Yes. And finally, letter K, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. Yes. Yes. All right, Ms. Paxton, letter A, I, J, K are yeses, the rest are no. Any other comments, questions, input? No. I'll move to approve. Variance from 1295.09B2C of the Potassical Code for Variance Application VA 18-024 with the following supplementary condition. The applicant shall obtain all necessary permits from the City of Potassical and Lincoln County Building Code Department for the sign. That's my motion. Is there a second? Second. There's been a second by Ms. Rodeback. Is there a discussion on the motion? No. Roll call, please. Mr. Platt. Yes. Mr. Howe. Yes. Ms. Rodeback. Yes. Mr. McKittrick? Yes. Mr. Ashcraft? Yes. Congratulations, sir. You can let Mr. Hatcher know that the application has been approved. <coughs> Staff will be getting with you in the next couple days. As I told the others, you're welcome to say we certainly won't be offended if you don't. Thank you, guys. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. We have finally got to Letter D on the agenda. Mr. Kerner has waited patiently for this. He submitted a request form, so sir, we will get to this. This is conditional use application. C-18-006. <coughs> Ask staff for the report, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, the applicant is Randy Allmendinger, Joe Kerner, and Ronald Knitz. Uh, applicant and owner both. The location is 350 South Main Street. 0.9 acres in size and zoned downtown business. And the request is for conditional use uh, pursuant to 1245.043 of the Potassial Code to allow for one, two, three, or four family residential dwelling units within the existing building. So the property in question, a little tough to see, is here in yellow. Here's the railroad tracks, uh, Main Street, uh, Mama Linda's is over here. Uh, so the property, as I mentioned, is 0 0.9 acres. There's a two-story building of unknown size. Uh, apparently, it houses a tax service, but does not appear to have any other commercial occupants. I know it says there's a potassium post out there, but I don't know if they're still housed in that building. As proposed, there's two apartments that were created from the vacant commercial space. Uh, according to the applicant's narrative, there's one upstairs, and there's one downstairs in the rear of the building. Uh, no further information was provided as part of the application pertaining to those apartments. Uh, the request, as I mentioned, is to allow the two apartments to be located in a building in the DB Downtown Business District that is a conditional use. Uh, the applicants, as part of their native, or narrative, has stated that the apartments are to assist homeless individuals who have medical problems and that the apartments will be in accordance with the laws of Potascula. So here's a shot from Main Street looking at the front of the building. Uh, there's the Tax Now sign, also the Potascula Post. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm not sure if the Potascula Post is still at that location. Here's a shot of the rear of the building from the parking lot. Uh, this is kind of from the Depot Street Coffee House, looking towards the back of the building. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Department did provide a few comments. Um, we do find it commendable that the applicants would assist people with medical problems. However, uh, the amount of issues created by the tenants is concerning. Um, while it could be argued that the tenants are the issue and not the apartments, however, the lack of oversight from the landlords is troubling. Um, so far, uh, since September of this year, there's been an average of six police calls per month. Um, you would think that should give the applicants um, concerns to address the issue considering the number of police calls. However, staff uh, really at this time has no, had, had no real indication that the applicants are doing anything to address this. Uh, we did receive an email from Mr. Kerner, I believe on Friday, indicating that he was seeking to get uh, substance abuse assistance for one of the tenants. Um, but I did want to mention that there was also a police report just this past Saturday. 
Uh, so no information in the application uh, address parking. The code does require a minimum of two parking spaces for the apartments. Uh, the future land use map does designate the property for mixed use, so the commercial and apartment combination would be in compliance with the comprehensive plan. Uh, the ins zoning inspector did provide some comments. Um, as of December 4th of this year, there have been three code violations on the property. Two of those related to uh, trash and debris have been corrected. The final outstanding code violation is the apartments without a conditional use, which the applicants are addressing this evening. Uh, no other departments or agencies did provide comments. <clears throat> so surrounding properties all zoned downtown business. Uh, to the north is a barbershop, east is a parking lot, south is a bank, and to the west is vacant. Again, the findings of fact that are contained in your staff report. And then specific criteria for conditional uses. Um, as we have discussed earlier in section 12.15.05, there are some other uh, factors that could be weighed by the board when deciding if a conditional use is appropriate. Uh, the one that staff felt was appropriate is that the Board of Zoning Appeals may, at its discretion, require that upon the issuance of a conditional use permit, the conditions of the permit be subject to periodic review to ensure compliance with the terms of the permit. And from staff standpoints, due to the property's recent history with an average of six police calls per month, if these apartments are approved, I think it would be um, in the city's best interest to make sure that if conditions are placed upon the approval of the apartments that we revisit this to make sure that the situation has gotten better. So some possible supplementary conditions to consider. One, the applicant shall have the apartments inspected and approved by the Licking County Building Code Department. Two, the applicant shall have the apartments inspected and approved by the West Licking jo Joint Fire District. Three, the apartments shall not be hazardous or disturbing to existing or future neighboring uses. Four, the apartments shall not create excessive additional requirements at public cost for public facilities and services and will not be detrimental to the economic welfare of the community. And five, the Board of Zoning Appeals shall review the conditions of the conditional use permit to ensure compliance with the conditions of the permit in one year from the date of approval. And I would be happy to answer any questions. I do have one question. You, I guess just for clarity, maybe I missed it. This is zoned DB. Correct. And, and, a, and any kind of apartment use is a conditional use. Correct. But at least one upstairs and, and it probably or possibly or there is a second apartment existing there now correct there's two apartments that were installed without a conditional use permit without a per do we know when those were installed um the, it came to our attention in september with the police report so at least in september but i'm sure the applicant could address that better than i could okay okay any other questions for staff? No. Um, I have the applicants. I have a number of speaker forms here. The applicants are Mr. Almendinger, Mr. Kerner, and Mr. Knitz. Um, Mr. Kerner submitted a speaker request form. Who of the applicants are here that would like to speak and add additional information or testimony to the board? Anyone? Mr. Kerner, please feel free to come forward. Thank you much. My name is uh, Joseph Kerner. And I'm one of the owner partners of the building at 350 South Main Street in the task I can have you raise your hand here, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and I'll be God? I do. Thank you. Mr. Kerner, do you have additional testimony or evidence you'd like to present to this board? Okay. Go ahead. Do, do you have any additional testimony or evidence that you'd like to give to this board? I would, yes. Please feel free. Okay. Uh, the three partners purchased the building, the old Pataskala Standard was ensconced in there. Uh, 
And we thought since Randy had the Pascua Post and we had Tax Now that we would also engage in renovating this building into usable office space, which we did. And uh, the tenants were in there for, gee, I don't know, uh, up until the last year and a half, okay, there, there were tenants in there. At that time, a couple of tenants uh, left. Uh, two of them uh, still owe about 4000 in back rent. I doubt we'll ever collect that. Uh, two of the other residents uh, left for other reasons, okay? The Chamber of Commerce was ensconced in there, and they are now over on Front Street. Um, we did attempt to rent this building, and uh, we were unsuccessful in that over the last year and a half. And so Randy had Mr. Romaninger had a couple of uh, people approach him. One was a homeless individual who has some family in the area, a sister and a brother-in-law, and uh, we took him in into the back area, which was the former Connie Cutts, uh, a hair salon. Uh, he has not been the main problem in these police actions. Uh, one of Randy's cleaning people had a older gentleman, again a homeless individual, who did not have any place to live, and Randy indicated that we ought to take him in, the upstairs. Uh, the upstairs has approximately uh, 1,400 square feet, as does the downstairs. Uh, the individual upstairs has really been the creator of problems. Recently, in this past week, uh, he has been taken by an anger management hospital out to the hospital, which is on the border of Ohio and Indiana. I believe it's uh, Middle Point, Ohio. Oh, it's right on the border. We are attempting to clean up our act, their act, if you will. I'm not sure how much success we will have. Okay, anybody that's under a substance, uh, you really can't get up there and take the substance away from them, okay? They've got to do it themselves. Uh, so, we are hopeful that we can get conditional use uh, in order to ensconce these two people here. I'm not sure that the upstairs individual is going to be able to continue, uh, but we would still like to have some hope of having some alternative use. Uh, it's our goal anyhow to rent out the office space which is still available over there at 350 South Main. Haven't had much luck in doing that. Uh, and as of today's date, Randy said a realtor has somebody who is willing to buy the building and we're giving that some thought also. Uh, it's my hope that the Zoning Commission, the Zoning Board here of Appeals will give us conditional use to continue. We are in the process of doing some of the repairs of the damage that has been caused by the individual upstairs. Uh, and as I said, he's out a couple hundred miles away on the border of Indiana in and in an anger management program. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions for me other than I've said at this point. 
Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Kerner from the board? What type of facilities are available for your tenants? Is there a full bathroom? There's, there, are, there are full bathrooms on both floors. Okay, there's a full bathroom upstairs, and that there's a full bathroom downstairs. And are there any professional registered uh, individuals that are monitoring the people that are in, these, in your facility? That's, that's certainly our thought that uh, the relatives have got to provide something at least for the individual downstairs and we've got to see if we can get, if that's possible, okay, some sort of assisted uh, living individual uh, to come in and monitor the upstairs individual. I don't know if that's going to be possible. Okay. But there's nobody at the current time, okay? Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other questions from Mr. Kerner? Any questions from staff? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kerner. You may be seated. We have three other spe speaker request forms on this and I believe five other agenda items. We've been here almost two hours. I'm going to request a short, very short, five-minute recess. And then the board will come back, call the other three speakers up, and we will continue on with this application. So I will move to recess. It is now 819. We will be back here no later than 824. Is there a second? A second. Ms. Redeback? Yes. Mr. McKittrick? Yes. Mr. Platt? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. Ashcraft? Yes. We return from recess. We will take back up, continue on. With application CU 18-006, I have three speaker request forms. The first one in front of me is from a Mr. Tom Lee. Mr. Lee, would you like to come forward and give your name and address for the record? Ms. Paxton, <coughs> let's swear you in. My name's Tom Lee. I live at 74. 82 Columbia Road, Fastwood. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you have to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you that? I do. Thank you. Uh, as a matter of note, uh, Aaron Lee Epley is the speaker. Yes. That's my daughter. She's not here. Okay. So, Thank you. Uh, like I said, my name is Tom Lee, and I'm here to uh, represent the property of GLR Family Properties. Uh, we're located at 36 Depot Street, which if you go to the back, if you look out our window, that's, that's our view. <coughs> My family has owned this property at 36 Depot Street since the 1960s. My father-in-law, which I think some of you know, Howard Robinson, practiced law there until 1996. Then we leased uh, the property to the bank in 2016. And since then, my son and daughter and daughter-in-law have owned it and they operate Depot Street Coffee. Could you pull up the police report? My main statement would be what we have witnessed with the police and the fire runs there. We have actually kind of been a victim of all the police and the fire runs. We have witnessed the, the drunks roll around the bank parking lot. Could, could you speak up a little louder and maybe into the mic a little bit? Okay. He's having problems hearing. Ow. Okay. <laughs> we have witnessed the, the drunks rolling out of the park, parking lot, uh, drunk fighting. They've been hauled off to jail. There's been a third person. There's only been mention of, of two people, both males. They've both gone to jail. But there's a third person, <coughs> peppermint, excuse me. There's a third person that's been giving us a lot of trouble there too. It's a female, and <coughs> she has been nicknamed or codenamed uh, the crack lady. She lives at that apartment. She did live at that apartment. And she has been at the coffee shop, um, knocking over stuff on the counter, banging on the door to get in, 
We even have, uh, there was one time that she was on that ramp at the, uh, the entrance to that apartment. That is an apartment right there. It's where the old Susie Cotton Curl used to be. We've witnessed her come out on that ramp, walk over in the parking lot of the bank and urinate. That's what we get to see. <clears throat> Currently with her, we have charges pending against her. She came over and attacked a person on her patio at the coffee shop and tried to steal her purse. We've been to court with her three times. I don't think this is the atmosphere that we want to create <coughs> in downtown Tabasco. And that's why we're adamantly against this rezoning of this building. In my mind, in my reasoning, the applicants have completely and totally disregarded and disrespect to the city of Patasqua. We've been around here for a long time. We as in the Robinson and the Lees. They have gone ahead and they've just done what they wanted to do by putting homeless people. Why do I keep hearing homeless people? That's not something that we want running around downtown. A lot of good things have happened in Patasqua in the last five years. The revitalization of the streets, the curbs, the sidewalks, looks nice. The veterans park, it looks nice. This is not a step in the right direction, not at all. And as far as representative the Lee, the Robinson, and the Depot Street Coffee, we adamantly, adamantly disagree with this zoning request. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions? For Mr. Lee from the board. No. no. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I uh, also have a speaker request form um, from Mr. Hayes. Welcome, Mr. Hayes. Good evening. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Dan Hayes, 377 South Main, Pasqua. Okay. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So you got. I do. Thank you. Joe, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, yes. great. All right, so um, my name is Dan Hayes. I live with my wife and three kids at 377 South Main uh, through an LLC. I own a commercial property at 21 and 25 Depot Street, which is just right around the corner from here as well. Uh, but really, I'm not here as a property owner as much as I am a dad. I'm here representing my 13-year-old son. Um, as all of you know, uh, there are some really great things about living in a small town. And there are some really bad things about living in a small town. The great thing, which my 13-year-old son likes to take advantage of, is a little bit of freedom. He likes to walk down, get a soda pop at Mama Linda's, and uh, if it's morning time, he goes and gets a donut and chocolate milk or hot chocolate at the Depot Street Coffee House. Uh, he wanted me to come tonight because he can't do that anymore. Um, what's happened down here is sheer insanity. Um, so let's start and uh, discuss what the applicants have uh, indicated this evening. Uh, they kind of indicate that the commercial tenants just kind of vanished. We're not sure what happened. They just left. Well, what happened was the south wall of the building collapsed, and they didn't fix it. Still down. In fact, if you look at the pictures, you can see how tall the, oh, go back to the last Sorry. one, please. Yep, how the north wall, see how tall it is? And how the south wall doesn't go up so high? That's because it collapsed. And there's currently a blue tarp hanging over the side of the building. Chamber of Commerce doesn't want to be in a place like that, and the, neither does any other professional office. I would guess if you talk to any of those tenants uh, that Mr. Kern or Sarah are behind on their rent, it's because they left before their lease was up and weren't going to pay these people anything. <coughs> so what you have here is you have a situation where businessmen from out of town own a property in the village of Patasco or the city of Patasco. Uh, they let it go to disrepair. The commercial tenants left. They're out of options, and instead of doing the right thing, uh, they just start throwing residential tenants in a commercial building. I think if you asked more specific questions, you would find, unless they've changed it since I was in there last, there are no kitchens in this building. And I do not recall there being full bathrooms with tubs and showers, but it's been since Tom called and did since I was there. If they've been added, I'm sure it was done without a permit. 
So what is uh, what else did, the, does the the applicant wants to talk about how great they're being by allowing homeless in, which is it's it's notable. I mean, it's a good thing that they could do that at their own house if they want to help the homeless. Um, I uh, one bad thing about living in a small town is you know everyone. I know Mr. Kerner. I've known him for two decades. He's a nice guy. Okay, I've known uh, Randy Armendinger for two decades. Nice guy. Neither of them live here. They just happen to own this building. And I know them both well enough that if what was going on in this building was going on a block from their house, they'd be down here yelling at you too. So, let's get to uh, the point of the conversation. Um, yeah, the out-of-town businessmen who decided that they were gonna put residential tenants in without going through the proper process. They got caught, now all of a sudden they're philanthropists who are trying to help homeless people. That's what you have. They're not set up for residential use. Um, honestly, there's a very good argument for mixed use zoning in downtown. I'm not necessarily opposed to mixed use zoning in downtown. The question is, is this how that process should happen? Should it happen by business people just forcing it on you and then after the fact saying, oh, we didn't know we needed to get permission to do something. This isn't a dad who built a basketball court in his backyard for his daughters and made a mistake. These are sophisticated business people. One is an accountant, the other owns media outlets. Okay? They put these people in this property, they got caught, and now they're in here trying to look like philanthropists. It's offensive. Plain and simple, offensive. If you look, you will find that the taxes on this property are seriously delinquent and they are not in contract to fix it. They have not worked out arrangements with the county to pay their taxes. I don't know how they're going to fix the building when their taxes aren't even paid. If for some reason you decide to grant uh, the conditional use, uh, we would beg you uh, to require as much oversight as possible in the um, approval of the units um, within the building, uh, we would ask that you require that their taxes be paid. It's, it's, really, it's really disturbing to sit on your front porch and watch the medical and EMS services that the rest of us are paying taxes for respond to a building, to tenants who are likely paying rent to people who aren't paying those same taxes, and just letting those tax bills go in the trash can every month. Require inspections, if you're going to do it, but we would ask that you not do it. I will gladly answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Does the board have any questions for Mr. Hayes? No. I no. do not. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. That is the end of the speaker request forms that I have received for this. Is there anyone else here that would like to offer testimony? or evidence or otherwise to this application. <clears throat> Is there any follow-up from the staff, additional information you'd like to provide? No, sir. Any follow-up or additional information you'd like to provide as the applicant, Mr. <coughs> Kerner? Please feel free to come forward. Still under oath. Okay. Uh, certainly, uh, Mr. Hayes Sr. and Ben Hayes have some very good points to make. And uh, I think some of their observations are right on the money. Uh, certainly, Mr. Hayes Sr. Uh, seeing Mr. Vance's daughter out in the parking lot and going out over to the coffee house and carrying on. Uh, she is no longer coming around, okay? We have instructed that she's not to live there, okay? We would hope if she can get sober, okay, she's got a serious addiction problem also. And uh, 
we would hope that she and perhaps two of the other family members that are in town here can assist Mr. Vance in seeing the light, in other words, of being a peaceful and good resident. Um, I guess with Dan Hayes, uh, see, I'm not, that wasn't our intention of not to pay the taxes. The money just isn't there. And that's uh, the absolute truth, okay? So where is it, where is it gonna come from? That's good. We were hopeful, yes, and I'm not sure that the falling of the south parapet wall, uh, the one half was the, per was the reason that the people left. Uh, the inside of the building was uh, certainly inhabitable and uh, in good shape. It's our hope to get the building back into repair. Uh, we're currently working on the building as to some of the damage that has been caused by the upstairs <coughs> resident who's now on the Indiana border. Um, I would hope at least for a, at the time being, that the appeals board would allow us conditional use uh, in order to collect whatever meager rents we are from them. And no, we aren't getting a whole lot of money from them. So uh, having a couple of homeless people around is certainly, certainly, uh, <coughs> certainly a sideline of the intended building when we purchased it in 2007 from Tom Caw and moved in, renovated the entire building into office usage, okay? It, co it couldn't be used for offices before we moved in. And we put a great deal of our own cash and time into that. And uh, I guess I have to leave it up to you. I'm not, uh, you know, sure which, which way you'll go on it, but, uh, and I'm not sure where you would say that the other individual that's living downstairs right now, Jimmy Vance, where are you going to place him? So maybe that's not your worry. Uh, it's not my worry, but it is a concern, okay, now that the individual is in the building and he's He's been amiable. He hasn't been the troublemaker. So, okay. Any any questions? Does the board have any questions for Mr. Kearney? No. Feel free to pick me so. up if you want. That's okay. Thank you, Mr. Kearney. You may have a seat. Anyone else here that wishes to speak? Staff, board. Going once and going twice. I will say this. Okay. Um, the last thing I like to do to people is say no. But sometimes saying no to someone is in their best interest. And from what I've heard from Mr. Kerner today, um, I, I don't think it's in his best interest to pursue this application. Okay. Anything else from the board? So we'll go ahead and close testimony. We will go over our findings of fact as required by the code. And this is, they're slightly different as this is a conditional use as opposed to the variances we heard earlier. This will be for findings of fact for conditional use application 18-006. Number one, 
is in fact a conditional use as established under the provisions of Title III of the Planning and Zoning Code for the specific zoning district of the parcel listed on the application. Yes. Number two, will be harmonious with and in accordance with the general objectives or with any specific objectives of the city comprehensive plan and or this code? No. No. Number three, will be designed, constructed, operated, and maintained so as to be harmonious in appearance with the existing or intended character of the general vicinity and that such use will not change the essential character of the same area. No. no. Number four, will not be har hazardous or disturbing to <coughs> existing or future neighbor neighboring uses. It will be. It will be, no. It will be, it will so be. the so answer no. is no. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. For the double negative? Are we in agreement? Yes. Correct. Number five, will be served adequately by essential public facilities and services such as highway streets, police and fire protection, drainage structures, refuse disposal, water, water and sewer and schools, or that the persons or agencies responsible for the establishment of the pros proposed use shall be able to provide adequately any such services. No. I believe, yes. I would say I yes. yes. It's currently being served. Uh, if I'm understanding, I hear three yeses and two noes. Is that correct? I'm a yes. So we'll put yes for number five. Number six, will not create excessive additional requirements at public cost for public facilities and services and will not be detrimental to the economic welfare of the community. No. no. Number seven, will not involve uses, activities, processes, materials, equipment, and conditions of operations that will be detrimental to any person's property or the general welfare, including but not <coughs> including but limited. Assuming there's supposed to be a knot in there, including but not limited to excessive production of traffic, noise, smoke, fumes, glare, odor, potential for explosion, and air or water pollution. Excuse me. Yes. You have a slide with what you're reading, and it only goes down through five, so. Oh, there, there you got finding a pass there. Okay. That's that's for the variances. Do we have the one for conditional uses? Yeah. Number seven again. My answer is no. No. I have two no's. No. I have three no's. Well, I have one no's, but I mean I have <laughs> three no's. Exactly. All right. So we'll mark no for number seven. Number eight. We'll have vehicular approaches to the property, which shall be so de designed as to not create an interference with traffic on surrounding public thoroughfares. Yes. Yes. And finally, number nine, will not result in destruction, loss, or damage of a natural, scenic, or historic feature of major importance. Yes, yes it will not. Are we all in agreement that's a yes? Yes. yes. Okay. So, Ms. Paxton, we have yeses for number one, five, eight, and nine, no's for two, three, six, two, three, four, six, and seven. All right. This board can choose to approve, disapprove, or approve with conditions. A conditional use application submitted to it. Um, conditional uses fall under Chapter 1215 of the Code. 1215.02, General Provisions. I'm going to read this just because I feel it's a important um, you all have heard me say before I hold conditional uses uh, to 
very high standard and they must be contemplated, considered, I'm sorry, considered uh, with a lot of care. 121502, under some unusual circumstances, a use which more intensely affects an area than those uses permitted in the zoning district in which it is located may nevertheless be desirable and also compatible with permitted uses if that use is properly controlled and regulated. The Planning and Zoning Commission has defined such uses to exist as conditional uses where these unusual, unusual circumstances exist and where the conditional use will be consistent with the general purpose and intent of this zoning district. I don't necessarily feel that this is harmonious, um, that it's a good fit for surrounding uses. Um, I don't know when I look through our conditional use supplementary <coughs> conditions that there's really a good way that I can come up with to put conditions on this application. So um, uh, out of our, I guess, criteria we're allowed to consider and considering the facts that have been presented, um, I need to get back to my application here. There it is. Um, considering what's been presented in the application and the testimony provided, I will move. Uh, as soon as I find it, to disapprove a conditional use pursuant to section 1245043 of the Potaskal Code for application CU 18 006. That is my motion as a second. A second. second. Seconded by Mr. McKittrick. Is there discussion on the motion? Roll call, please. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. Uh, Ms. Rodebeck? Yes. Mr. Platt? Yes. Mr. Ashcraft? Yes. Mr. McKittrick? Yes. Okay, the motion to disapprove the application has been approved. Mr. Kerner, your application was not approved. I am sorry. Um, staff will follow up with you uh, for, um, I guess, next steps or processes for you. Thank you all that came out to speak on this. Um, you all, including Mr. Kerner, are welcome to stay for the rest of our meeting. However, we understand if you do not wish to. Have a good evening. That will take us to the findings of fact for the applications that we considered this evening. So, I will entertain a motion to approve the findings of fact as discussed in this hearing for variance application VA-18-022. Is there a motion? Is second. there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion on the motion? No. Roll call, please. Mr. Ashcraft? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. McKittrick? Yes. Mr. Platt? Yes. Ms. Rodebeck? Yes. I will entertain a motion to approve the findings of fact for variance application VA-18-023 as discussed in the hearing for said application. Is there a motion? So moved. Been moved. Is there a second? A second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Rodebeck? Yes. Mr. McKittrick? Yes. Mr. Platt? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. Ashcraft? Yes. I entertain a motion for the findings of fact for variance application VA-18-024 as discussed in this hearing. Is there a motion? I move. It's been moved by Mr. Mr. McKittrick, second by Mr. Ashcraft. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Platt? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. McKittrick? Yes. Mr. Ashcraft? Yes. Ms. Rodebeck? Yes. And finally, uh, entertain a motion to approve the findings of fact for conditional use application CU-18-006 as discussed in the hearing for said application. So moved. Moved by Mr. Ashcraft. Is there a second? Second. And seconded. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Rodebeck? Yes. Mr. Platt? Yes. Mr. Ashcraft? <coughs> Mr. McKittrick? Yes. I need a motion to excuse the absence of Ms. T.J. Rodebeck from the November 13, 2018 meeting. So moved. There's been a motion. Is there a second? A second. Discussion? 
Roll call, please. Mr. Howell. Yes. Ms. Rinneback. Abstain. Mr. Platt. Yes. Mr. Ashcraft. Yes. Mr. McKittrick. Yes. You all have the minutes from the November 13, 2018 regular meeting in front of you. Uh, I will note one change at the very bottom of page two. The last line says, the last two lines, the last sentence. Mr. Platt noted the hearing is being recorded and questions or testimony being presented is, and it says, it says accessible. I was asked if that would be changed to a, available. It is available to the applicant. Um, testimony is recorded and it is available to all. That will include the applicant. Uh, if there's no other changes or somebody's not okay with that change, please let me know. Otherwise, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes as amended. So moved. Moved by Mr. Ashcraft. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Howe. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. McKittrick? Yes. Ms. Rodebeck? Abstain. Mr. Ashcraft? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. Platt? Yes. That will bring us to number nine, other business. Um, Scott provided me with a schedule for next year's meetings that I have no idea where I put it, but I have it somewhere here. Yep. Do you guys have it in front of you? Yes. Um, looks lovely to me. The... Um, the only thing I would say is this board normally meets at 6.30. I don't believe there's a requirement for a time. There has been an interest expressed to me to maybe move the meeting up a little bit. Um, it's the pleasure of the board unless staff says otherwise. But as we set our meeting schedule for next year, unless I hear um, opposition, is there a discussion of moving the meeting up? It would still be held on the second Tuesdays of the month according to this schedule, but it could be held at 5, 536, something like that. I don't have a preference, that's just been the request has been questions been posed to me. Is there no earlier than six, I would say, for residents and board members. Okay. I hear six o'clock. Staff, is there any concern with moving it to six as opposed to six thirty? The only thought would be why why just so we don't run into late nights because it's now nine o'clock okay. this board is thorough and i believe it's good at what it does but it does take time to get through these applications sometimes um the earliest i would say is five six seems reasonable be trying to get residents here but i'm open to i don't know what everybody else's thoughts are uh, i would go do? no earlier than six simply for the reason that a lot of residents drive from downtown or enter Columbus and as we all know the roads are getting bad out here and uh, then you're also cutting in my dinner time. I understand that. <laughs> so there will be also a motion to have people <coughs> at the board meetings uh, following this. Yeah, so we can do it at five to people. <laughs> so, so I will comment, if I may, that our organizational meeting will be in January. Okay. So at okay. that time, we can make the request to move it up to six, if you like. This was just kind of an informational only, okay. just to make sure that you were aware, so it's not <coughs> sprung upon you at the organizational meeting next month. So that way, a month to take a look at it. Okay. Sure. You, you do not need a motion then to approve this schedule. The January 8th meeting will already be scheduled then for 6.30. How do, how do you schedule a meeting then? If we want to move it up, <coughs> my thought would be at an organizational meeting, we typically do schedule, Robert's Rules of Order, chairperson, vice chairperson, then um, we'll be starting at 6 next month anyway to get through the organizational meeting. I think we do the meeting at 6.30, and then if there's a motion from the board to move it up to 6.00, subsequent meetings we can do that but essentially we'll be starting at six next month anyway okay okay makes sense then we will us. we will take that up in january then and that when we get to adjournment of this meeting we'll adjourn it to six on the eighth when we come to that 
We have a extension request for application CU-18-001 for the Patapsco Oaks Care Center. Staff, would you like to comment on that? Sure. The applicant is Ben Payne with M&A Architects. The owner is MCM Realty Company. They're located at 144 East Broad Street. Uh, it's a combination of four different parcels. I think they have since been combined into one. It's 7.04 total acres. It's a <coughs> professional research office. And they're requesting a, an extension of a conditional use pursuant to Section 1215.09 of the Potastula Code excuse me, to allow the property to be used as a nursing home. So this is Potascula Oaks on the corner of Broad and 310, the mm -hmm. north west or northeast part of the corner, um, outlined in yellow here. There's the golf course. So the conditional use was approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals on March 13th, 2018. Um, the code states that a conditional use will become void if it's not carried out within six months. The code does not clearly define what carried out is. Um, in June, the applicant, their next step, they started with the rezoning and then had to do the conditional use and then had to do the transportation corridor over to Lake District approval through the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, so from staff's perspective, they had their conditional use approved in March, their TCOD approved in June, so they were actively carrying out their conditional use. At this point, there has been no activity uh, on the project since then. So from the staff standpoint, we felt that the six month carrying it out has not occurred. So the Planning and Zoning Department reached out to the applicant and indicated that you are permitted per code to request an extension of six months for your conditional use. <clears throat> Excuse me. They also stated that their schedule has changed on the project as they're evaluating general contractors as a reason why they haven't moved forward to this point. So the property is reconfigured on this 310. So north is to the right. 310 is on the top. Broad Street is on the left-hand side. So they would be doing an addition to the existing building then adding a new building along 310. Um, so the use came before Board of Zoning Appeals who approved the use to say yes, a nursing care facility is permitted to expand on this property. Then the Planning and Zoning Commission as part of the TCOD application looked at the configuration, architecture, landscaping, sign <coughs> site, parking, they kind of looked at the nuts and bolts. Uh, the board's decision was strictly to say, is this use appropriate for these properties and they had to grant that because of the multiple different properties associated with the project that the use would be expanding onto an adjacent property. Uh, so the only supplementary condition or with the approval, I have not done one of these before, uh, that the extension shall be valid for six months from the date of approval. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. So this board approved the conditional use in March you all did. Sounds so so like three people. <laughs> <laughs> um, must not have had a problem with it then. It sounds like in the code they're entitled to, or at least it's maybe not entitled, but open to a six month extension should they request. So the ask of this board is to approve a an extension for a six month period from today's date. Is that correct? That is correct. Are there any questions from the board for staff? The, we would continue the defining use of carry on as we are now. <coughs> I think so. So, for example, um, <coughs> the next step would be, you know, permit would definitely be something that would qualify as carrying it out. I think, you know, even getting into contact with us, depending about we're actively moving forward, it's just been radio silence for about six months. So, I think if from our perspective, instead of making them go back through the process, they have to navigate three boards and go through council. So in order to do that, I have all inclination to think that they're serious about the project. It's just that it's been this radio silence for six months that if, if we start to have contact again, um, I think within that six months, if they submit a permit to begin construction or make some sort of step forward, I think we would consider that carrying it out. 
but I think if they remain silent for another six months that they've had about a year since their TCOD approval that there's really no reason they can't take that step forward and they shouldn't have to come back. But at this point, I think if they get a permit into us within six months or we're having discussions on getting the permit appropriately filed, I think they're actively working to move forward. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so staff has provided a sample motion. Is there any other? Are, are there any other questions from the board? No. So I will move to approve an extension to conditional UCA CU dash one a dash zero zero one, with the following condition that the extension shall be valid for a six month period from date of approval, which is today, December eleven. 2018 would be the date of approval. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Is there discussion? No. Roll call, please. Mr. Platt. Yes. Mr. Howe. Yes. Mr. McKittrick. Yes. Mr. Ashcraft. Yes. Mr. Rodeback. Yes. Motion's been approved. Um, the only other other business I had going back to 4A under old business, we asked the applicant and they or his representative and indicated they would it would be tabled till March but our motion did not include tabling it till March um, this is one again one of those ongoing tabling kind of things I guess I would just say that if, if staff was to get calls on it and things I, I think that we should tell people hey we did, that we don't anticipate the board taking this up till March that's been the request of the applicant um, Worst case scenario, they come back in February and then nobody's been notified. So I just I don't want to avoid something like that happening. So, if they do request, if they do provide updated plans <coughs> by the appropriate deadline, uh, we will go through the typical notification process of putting in the paper, notifying neighbors. So we'll make sure okay. that if they do decide we're moving forward and they have a complete application that's been updated that we will do the appropriate notification measures. Okay, that's great. That, that's helpful, thank you. Um, we've got uh, motion to, or, or action here on 9B um, for an executive session, so I will move to enter into executive session pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22G3. For conferences with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are subject to a pending or imminent court action uh, at this time it will be the board and mr. Zetz um, that will be attending uh, this executive session there's been a motion is there a second so moved there's been a second by mr. Ashcraft correct I did the second um, discussion on the motion no. No, wait a minute. Did I move it or did I entertain the motion? You entertained the motion, actually. So Mr. Ashcraft moved I'll the motion. Second. Right right. I'll second by Mr. Howell. My apologies. Discussion on the motion. No. Roll call, please. Mr. Ashcraft. Yes. Mr. Platt. Yes. Mr. McKittrick. Yes. Mr. Schroederbeck. Yes. Mr. Howell. Yes. So the time now is 9.07. We are now in executive session. <coughs> so I'll entertain a motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Okay. Moved by Mr. Ashcraft. Second by Ms. Rodeback. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Howe? Yes. Rodeback? Yes. Platt? Yes. Ashcraft? Yes. McKittrick? Yes. We are back in regular session. It is now 9.43 p.m. Uh, we'll move to adjourn the meeting. So move. To, to the Tuesday, January 8th, 2018 date at 6 o'clock p.m. for the organizational. Is there a second? A second. A <laughs> second by Mr. McKittrick. Discussion. Roll call, please. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Riverback? Yes. Mr. Platt? Yes. Mr. Ashcraft? Yes. Mr. McKittrick? Yes. We are now adjourned. <coughs> 9.43. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, no, I heard it. I